Hi everyone, this is Jessie and this is my first time putting my voice into a video but today I'm going to be rendering an old whip and basically just walk through it. It's gonna be really casual. If you don't like this format, honestly, you can let me know. I won't take it personally. I just wanted to post something because I haven't posted in a while and I wanted to try this as well but if you don't like it now we'll just go back to doing speed paints with music over them but yeah in the future I definitely want to do more polished video tutorials that actually take you through the process but for now it's just very basic I hope you get something out of it anyway so without further ado here we go so here's the sketch it's just a sketch with colour underneath. So the colour is mostly established. I generally establish most of the colour before I start rendering because it's just easier. But you can kind of use filters to change the colour later on in the drawing if you need to. And so I'm starting to render. And in this case, I've started from the face. Honestly, I either render from the place that bothers me the most in this case it's the face because this is an old drawing and I'm just looking at them like why did I do that but so I either start with the place that bothers me the most to look at or maybe it's just usually the most tedious for me because you know kind of like saving the best for last but obviously you can start from wherever you want so just kind of roughly rendering some of the face as well as the hair and generally start from the top and work my way down or if I've started from the bottom work my way up I'm just kind of cleaning everything up and adding strokes changing the form almost giving things like a line weight And yeah, rendering the face and changing the colors here and there of the shadows. Um, the face is something that probably improved the most in. Now starting to render the sleeve and yeah, basically in this picture, the lighting doesn't make sense right now. Um, as I said, it's an older drawing, like I have a little bit of a better sense of how lighting works, but anyhow, like basically you can say that the blue is the reflected light from the sky and there's also more reflected light from the ground almost, kind of like that orangey light from the ground so it's almost as if there's something bright orange in front of them I just wanted to kind of do something more playful um, yeah and another thing that doesn't make sense here is the perspective so please excuse that I'm still trying to get better at perspective it's really hard I'm still practicing so yeah, but I'm definitely better than I was when I first did this. And by the way, this thing is maybe like a few months old, so relatively speaking, it's not that long, but I feel like, you know, I'm trying to improve my process. I'm trying to streamline it because I'm honestly really slow, hence this literally 30 minute video. Um, but yeah, so I, my process makes more sense now. So even though it's only been a few months, you could say a lot has changed. Um, maybe I can share that in my next video. And yeah, you see me using the lasso tool a lot. It's to move things around, make them more accurate where I can. Um, because in Clip Studio, there isn't really a default liquify equivalent so I have to use the lasso tool to move things 
which works, but I actually downloaded a user-made version of the liquify tool almost. It seems cool, but because I've been using the Lasso tool for like years, it's just really weird to try using the liquify tool. I don't know, maybe I'll switch to it because it definitely seems like it would be more efficient. Um, yeah, I am starting to render more of the fabric. Just kind of having thinner lines where the light hits and obviously thicker lights where the shadow kind of rendering the sleeve um, and trying to think a little bit more about where the light would be hitting. So now I'm rendering the face more. Um, yeah, because again, this was like an old work in progress. I did end up kind of struggling with the faces a little more than I usually would. I'm probably looking at a reference now, so I've tried to cut most of like the really long pauses out. So there are still few, a few in there, but they're pretty short. Um, yeah, and adding more folds to the clothing. Um, it depends on the person, like you can add them in your sketch or you can add them after the sketch. I'm not sure what I prefer to be honest, maybe after the sketch because sometimes even if I kind of make the folds in the sketch, I end up changing it anyway. So it's just like, okay, I may as well do it after anyway. So here's me wrangling with the face and also excuse the zooming in and out, it's just to kind of see the overall picture and also the flipping. <laughs> uh, yeah, my process is probably like not the easiest on the eyes, but yeah, <laughs> it is how it is. And I think here, here I'm kind of, I'm trying to make the face nicer. <laughs> Um, so one thing that was kind of important to me in this was the expressions. So that's another reason why I spent so much time on the face. Um, you know, one has to be surprised and one has to be almost like mischievous. Anyway, it's kind of embarrassing to talk about. Um, I used to be so embarrassed drawing PDA, now it's like, Okay, this is a part of my life now, but it's also still embarrassing, so... Uh, yeah, so I switch between a few brushes. I generally use the G pen. I have edited the brush settings, so they're a little bit different. I'm not sure if I would actually recommend them though, because it depends on your preference, but yeah, you can... Play with the brush settings and see what suits you the best. Um, and then also painting brush. I honestly I don't use it that much anymore because it's hard to mm, do on a small scale. It's good for like big areas, but ah, uh, what's what's their name? Cloisius. K. L-O-Y-S-I-U-S. Cloisius is one of her painting brushes. I, I believe it's just her main painting brush. I use that but kind of tilt it on an angle just because it seems like angled brushes work better for me. And so I use those two mainly. And then I'll also use the hard airbrush and the blend tool, just the generic blend tool. Honestly, I didn't start using the hard airbrush until like, I think this year, or I don't know, just fairly recently, but I don't know why I didn't use it earlier. Like it just makes sense, I guess. It's like, why put the color down and then blend it when you can put it down and it's already blended? Like, hmm, anyhow. So I didn't, I didn't use it that much in this drawing though. I actually use it more so maybe you'll also see that in a future video. 
um, and yeah, so as you can see, it's kind of coming together. It's taking a while, but it's coming together. And honestly, like, after doing this, after trying to make this video, I just realized like how much I have to say about my art and the process, so... So I put down some patterns for the clothes, but I end up redoing those later. So what I've done just there is kind of, sometimes if I'm struggling with the perspective or the form slash anatomy, then I'll just draw over with like a neon brush on another layer. Um, in this case, it wasn't really that helpful because I did it wrong, but anyhow, like if you're kind of later in the rendering stage and you feel that something's wrong, you can draw over on another layer and kind of adjust things. But yeah, especially like, you know, because if you're drawing someone that's wearing clothes, it can be pretty important to kind of make sure that it actually makes sense. And you can, a body can fit under those clothes in a way that makes sense. So here I've started working on the hair. I didn't like the original hair, so I cut it out. I think I'm just working on the face a little bit more and making the expression more to what I intended it to be. Adding some highlights. And here I'm kind of experimenting with the hair. So on another layer, kind of doing it over and just seeing how it looks. And I end up going with, I believe the first one I drew. And we yeah, are also just kind of considering where the ribbon should be going, the ribbon for the hair. Honestly, this piece, I, I wasn't very, like, experimental with that, um, but yeah. So yeah, obviously just thinking about, you know, the wind and the ribbon, you would presume, flies higher because it's lighter than hair. The reason why I didn't like the original hair is because it kind of looked... I have this problem with hair, I kind of draw it as if it's one mass and then add, you know, like I add kind of locks of hair in the mass but it's still like one mass and it's very one dimensional so yeah, I tried to redraw it better and I think it's better but it's still, I mean it still could be better but whatever. And now we are working on the background, so I only worked on it a bit before going back to rendering the characters, but it was kind of just to test the waters and see like, oh, how, how's rendering the background gonna go? What am I gonna do? Just to like, give myself a chance to think about it. Mm. And here I was trying to fix the hair. Because, hmm, 
And now I'm trying to fix the face. Uh, I wasn't happy with the face. And you can see me flipping back and forth. So actually, I forgot to mention this, but a lot of times during this speed paint, you see me flipping back and forth between something that looks sketchy or something that looks less sketchy. Or just like between two different drawings and it's like, you know, I duplicate each iteration of the drawing so I can refer back to the previous one or any of the copies to see which one is better. So I'm constantly checking if what I did actually made it better or worse. Um, so yeah, I think I had like a few versions of the face and I was just comparing them and being like, oh, which one's better? So here, rendering out the hair. Um, nothing too fancy, honestly, just painting over it and making it lighter, kind of on the inside for the reflected light. And you can see me on the history tab in Clip Studio. That's also to flip back to you know, let's say like 50 actions ago and see 50 actions ago, like, did it look better? Should I go back, try again? And now I'm kind of trying to work on the readability. So right now the focus is definitely in that left shoulder, right shoulder, I don't, it should be left shoulder. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to add detail to other places and eventually I will fix the tones so it's a bit more evened out. And here I'm fixing the sleeve, so before that was done without a reference, but I'm like, okay, pulled up a sleeve reference and another window. And Mm, the thing with this recording is that I've limited it to the Clip Studio window, so out of frame, I'm actually doing other things like looking at references or honestly just messing around, but you can't see that because, I don't know, you don't have to see me like scrolling on Twitter basically, so that's why I've limited to the Clip Studio window, but it is a little bit limiting because you can't see me looking at references and it also doesn't record when for example you're using an effect in clip studio that opens a new window it won't show that window so if you're adjusting saturation for example it won't show that although i don't think i did much of that until the very end of the drawing but i think when i when the end plays it probably could be confusing Okay, so by this point, most of the clothes have been rendered. So you can see that the bright orange is kind of going up. And there's a bit of blue coming from the sky. And yeah, just experimenting with the hair there because <laughs> Chinese fantasy hair is so hard to draw in, a, in an appealing way. But yeah. I finally added his beauty mark <laughs> and now I'm adjusting the tones by using the magic wand to select the areas that are too dark and then either airbrushing or just painting over a lighter color and yeah adding more detail down there pushing the colors up the reflected light up because I know half of it's going to be covered by grass anyway so I kind of needed to push that up. That was something that I didn't properly account for which is why you should plan better than I do. <laughs> and yeah just fixing his belt because it was kind of bad.
I decided to cut the sleeve a bit because I felt like there was too much going on in that area and honestly it's more accurate even though it's not as interesting gesturally. Mm, yeah, so still kind of trying to add detail to that area because it was a little bit empty. Now we are back working on the hair, trying to figure out where the highlights are. Rendering the tips of the hair a bit. Redoing the face. Well, attempting to redo the face. If I recall correctly, I think I trash the redone version and I bring back the old version, so that's fun. So you can honestly just disregard what I do with the face for the next five minutes. And so I even tried pasting the sketch back over and rendering that again to see how it would look. Usually I would try and cut out these parts, but I don't know, hopefully you can learn something from them or, you know, see that it can be like a pretty chaotic process, but here I experimented with having the face like completely behind the shoulder, but then it ended up looking kind of weird, so I ditched that. I think I'm still fixing Shen Qing Chou's hair. Please excuse my Chinese pronunciation, it's pretty bad. I don't know how to use turns. <laughs> Chinese turns, not art turns, hopefully. Um, but yeah, like I will point out the mistakes that I observe here because like usually I wouldn't point them out because to be honest, you wouldn't be able to see them until I mention them and then great, now you can see my mistakes too. Basically, for Shen Qingzhou, like, you're not supposed to see the top of his head from this angle, but you can, so that's probably an issue. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's not perfect, but hmm, it's possible. <laughs> So when there are two characters in the one drawing, that's probably when readability is like the biggest concern because honestly there is so much nice fan art of two characters but then like quite often it, it's hard to read and it's hard to differentiate where one character starts and where one character ends and you don't really want that in your art because it makes it kind of confusing to look at. Um, yeah, I'm obviously not perfect at that either, but it's just, you have to exaggerate the shadows a little bit more, I guess. The thing is, like, I want my art to be pretty matte looking. 
it sounds weird when you look at it because it's clearly there's plenty of highlights and whatnot but there is one thing you can do where you open a new layer and you do like a white outline on one character and it's like a very kind of anime this is anime but <laughs> it's like a very anime effect and it can be very appealing for illustrations but it's not it's not really fitting for like a painterly style I guess like you can use it but you know you're not gonna see master painters doing that ever and you know I want that kind of matte painterly style so I was pretty tempted to do that here but I did not and so the hands I'm finally doing these hands and what I did was I took a photo of my hands just holding my hands in front of myself um, front camera timer and then I just used that as a reference and it turned out pretty decent so mm. okay finally we are experimenting with the background and well, watching it like in a time lapse it looks really fast but uh, it was a pretty tedious time so I ended up just using a grass brush okay what I just did there was I moved the clouds down because I felt like it didn't work with the composition that well having it just like in the middle like that I felt like it was kind of odd but it did start out as like a pretty pastel drawing and even though pastel is a nice style um, I still wanted more depth to it so I had to be kind of mindful of making sure that my darks were dark enough because that's an issue that's something I have an issue with so what I've done is darken the sky to kind of match the characters a little bit better like I tend to be a little bit washed out with colors even though as much as I love coloring and experimenting with colors I end up leaving them a little bit too bright in tone um, and here I'm experimenting with blur and just blurring the foreground and seeing if it looks better that way but it didn't work out so Here's where I switched to a cross brush and it looks better I mean it wasn't what I intended though honestly if I spent more time and manually drew the grass it could work but this was really just like a casual piece of fan art that I wanted to make so yeah I didn't want to overdo it and here I'm using overlay to adjust the colors and the tone again um yeah and so the reason why that's duplicated now is because i am comparing the background to the original background i had to see like okay what what kind of vibe was i going for how can i improve it um is it getting any better so yeah, even though I used a grass, grass brush, I did end up doing some paint strokes over it, filling in some areas, erasing some areas, and also adding a fringe effect. And as you can see, the version that I'm working on is the left, although it's kind of hard to tell because I keep flipping, but yeah, um, I've cropped it just in a way that I feel suits the composition better. So more space for like the hair I guess and less space at the front I don't know like generally just not having the characters like in the dead center and having them off to the side a bit I feel is more appealing mm, I'm still experimenting with blur but I ended up ditching that so 
yeah, you can you can play with effects and see how you feel about it. I think I still work on the face a little bit. Add some shadow under the hair so the forehead isn't just like a block of colour. So if you want to make things a little more cohesive colour-wise, you can use the airbrush, add in colours from other areas. And yeah, it's pretty much done. I'm um, adding the detail on the clothing, the patterns. Just doing that again. And still kind of adjusting the shadows in a way that I think is more, might be more accurate. And the tones of the background again. And the tones of the foreground, the grass. And yeah, here's the finished piece. <laughs> Ta-da! was helpful in some way or just entertaining at the very least like yeah again if you don't like this format because it's pretty casual then you can let me know if you do like it though please like the video maybe comment i'm also open to suggestions it's just i don't have that much time because i'm still studying so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.